everyone, and welcome to our Honest in Action panel, Truth Telling or Storytelling, the Impact of Negative Political Campaigns. On our panel tonight, we have Ms. Mary Linder, Professor of Government at Grayson College, Dr. Chase Machen, History Professor and Chair of Social Sciences at Grayson College, Dr. Gwen Malonson, History Professor at Southeastern State University, and Dr. Randy Fair, Communications Professor and Chair of Arts and Communication Studies, also from Grayson College. Our, moder our moderator for the evening will be Rob Chikowski, our first Vice President. Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> many critics of negativity argue that negative campaigning serves to corrupt and debase democratic discourse, to mislead and confuse citizens, to shrink and polarize the electorate, and to constrain elected representatives in their efforts to promote good public policy. What is your opinion on negativity corrupting political campaigns? Well, surprisingly, what we actually find is that in a lot of negative campaigning, there's actually more information in them than if you have something that's just all raw, raw patriotism and positive. And so they're not completely terrible in the sense, um, you know, that they just totally ruin American politics because they do provide some some information in there. Um, but what we do see is that people may start to feel negatively just towards politics in general to a certain extent. Um, and you really do see this in Texas um, because we have this sense of individualism where we, we have this perception that corruption is greater than it actually is. And sometimes with those negative ads, it will feed into that mentality. Um, and so I don't think it necessarily, you know, just totally ends democratic discourse or, or anything like that. Um, but, you know, we do see that there are some implications of it, and more regionally than, than I think anything else. I have a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> this could be dangerous. Um, I, I, I agree, in a, in a sense. I think, you know, from historically speaking, I'll, I'll stick to what little bit I know historically. Um, I think it also it depends. It depends on the time period that's going on, whether or not it's a positive or a negative. Um, you, never want to, to, uh, you never want to restrict freedom of speech and the ability to say what you say you want to say, however you want to say it, whether you're proper, using propaganda, right, your truth of your point of view. But, you know, there's been times in U.S. history when emotions get really out of hand. You can look at, you know, election of 1800, uh, 1828, good, good examples. And people uh, tend to get violent over the politics and people get hurt based upon you know, blatant lies. Uh, so I, I don't know if there's a, a way to get around that. I know legislation's been passed, you know, false false uh, uh, claims and certain things, but uh, I think you have to be careful. And I think it's, it's incumbent upon politicians and the American uh, people to call people on uh, what they know to be false, or at least do some fact check, uh, because uh, it's, 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 it's unfair for the American public. <laughs> all right, thank you all for coming. It's uh, good to see this crowd out here on uh, Tuesday night. Uh, hope you weren't twisted too much to be here. <laughs> Negative campaigns uh, obviously can have some truth to them. Obviously, they've been around for a long time. Uh, but negative campaigns, in, in one real sense, is meant to depress your opponent's voters. Uh, when someone uses a negative campaign, they want their opponent's voters to either stay home or switch sides. Now, the likelihood of switching sides is very low, so the tool that the politician wants to have is they want the supporter of that person to second guess, is it worth, worthwhile for me to go to the polls, take time to do it. So part of the reason for even developing a negative campaign is to depress turnout. That's why it's so essential for you voters to listen to the campaigns, listen to what's going on, and be able to determine whether the negativity is truthful or in Stephen Colbert's words, truthiness. Uh, because a, a lot of negative campaigns go into that realm of truthiness, and if you're not a careful listener, you'll be more depressed than someone who can realize that the negative campaigning is a lie, and you go right through it anyway. So you need to be actively engaged on that part as a listener, and not just blame the politicians for what happens to you. They wrapped it up great. 
Uh, as far as the negative corrupting, I definitely agree that you've got to look at the fact checking and doing your research and <laughs> avoid it becoming a mudslinging back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and you're just going with whatever the latest ad is that you've seen and assuming it's true because you're going to be a flip-flop voter then if that's all you're basing your opinion on. So you definitely want to do your research and find out, okay, what are they saying? Where is it coming from? Is it taken out of context? And then base your decision on what you find and what's out there as far as the research goes and where they're pulling that information from. So there is some benefit to having that negative if it gets you to go look. Dr. Fair, from the perspective of a communications professional, do you feel that the tone, wording, and content of a political advertisement can be used to effectively persuade the voters to change their opinion on the candidate or the issue? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> perfectly in communication and speech research, we call it cognitive dissonance when we're getting into persuasion. Are you going to be able to persuade somebody who is solely this party or solely that party? Probably not. Especially if they're die hard, yes I'm this. Can you make them think about it? Possibly. And that's kind of the point to put it out there. If they get you to think about it, then they've achieved their goal for the die hearts. It's really the undecided voter that this is going to make a difference because you will hopefully go do your research, you will hopefully go look at it more in depth. So it could possibly persuade the voter. So that's why they go through this methodology and putting their presentations together. Because if it's all flowers, roses, sunshine, well, is that really the state of the country right now? Do we believe that? Probably not. Is that how these two candidates are? Probably not. So you've got to really look at what is it you're looking for? What issues are important to you? And if they start hitting on those, then you definitely need to be doing your research. So there is some power behind how you put that message together. If it's a negative context, but you better be sure you've got all your facts so it's not truthiness as you're putting that message out there personally. So yes, there is some power in putting that together. Does, anything, uh, does anyone have anything they would like to add to that? <laughs> One of the things you have to realize is that the people behind campaigns are compu uh, communication specialists. They're not just sitting on the internet and they see something and, I'll, and they throw up a Facebook status. They are very carefully crafting a message in the same way that people craft uh, cigarette advertisements or shoe advertisements or clothing advertisements. They go through the same very specific routine to see whether things move people one way or another. And so when people ask, is there a benefit or do negative campaigns work? The answer is of course they do because at the end of the day they want to win a campaign and they are not going to do anything intentionally to shoot themselves in the foot. So if they see something working and it moves the needle in one direction in their favor, they're going to keep doing it, they're going to keep hammering it until they've achieved their goal, which is to be in office. Uh, their goal is not necessarily to put out the best information for governing. Their goal is to win a campaign, to win a war. Yeah, and I agree completely, and I would echo what you said earlier, that this is why it's so important for uh, people to get educated on what's going on in politics around them, regionally, nationally, because uh, these individuals work on numbers. Uh, they're not speaking usually to, well, probably who's sitting in this room, they're speaking to the majority of Americans who are too busy to pay attention uh, or uh, lack of attention for whatever reason. Uh, and they just want to catch them at a moment, an emotional pull, and, and, and sway them in that way. So it's very important, again, to make yourself aware of what's going on and uh, you know, ask questions and challenge a preconceived idea. Don't, you know, if you're a Republican for whatever reason, uh, don't just be a bootstepper to that party. If you're a Democrat, same way. Um, because uh, I think that's just as bad, uh, just to vote just for a party. Um, anyway. Yes, I, I think that people don't realize, it, just like what the others have been talking about, that everything is, is calculating when it comes to these political ads. Everything going into a campaign is very carefully crafted. Um, something that I sometimes show in my classes is the documentary The War Room, um, which you know looked behind the scenes of the 1992 Clinton election, that, that race. 
And you know, you see in there that they're they're getting down to the signs for the candidate on the floor at the national convention, and they're worried about the color of them. I mean, everything is carefully crafted. And so, when you're looking at these ads, if they're going to take that kind of care with the color of a sign, then you know every symbol, every word, every bit of the tone is carefully crafted as well. And so, you have to be good receivers of information. I think it's very important. Do negative ads affect voters' emotions more strongly than positive ads? Absolutely. Um, you know, we, we're in, we are emotional creatures. Human beings are emotional creatures. And, and we react to the negativity very strongly. Um, I was reading this, this article, in, and I think that it explained this very well. You know, in nature, if, if you're just out in the wild um, and you, you know, you get miss, you, know, you miss a leopard, then it's it's over. Right? You're going to get killed. Um, but if you miss a deer, well, you're just going to be hungry. And so that negative, that type of emotional um, thing is is very true, very telling. Um, we saw kind of you know we've seen a lot of emotional ads, a lot of emotional negative ads um, in this 2012 race. If you look at the um, during the Democratic primary, we had a candidate running challenging uh, President Obama for the nomination, um, Randall Terry. Actually, actually a Republican, but running for the Democratic nomination um, to try to bring some attention to his, you know, issue, which was abortion. And so, in running his ads, they were very graphic, um, and it, it was meant to try to, you know, you know, play on that emotion within you when you would see certain images. And so, you, you definitely see that that emotional aspect is is telling in all of these ads. Okay, so I'll be. Uh the bad guy on this one. I, I disagree. Or, or let's put it this way. I think it depends on how you might want to rephrase that question. What audience are you looking at? Because I can tell you, I can tell you if you've been to a Tea Party rally, a rally later, uh, those people get very excited. Same thing with the Democratic Party. Uh, it just depends on what audience you have and what message you're conveying. Um, I was looking at a, a, a video the other day from some high school students, from my high school students, I that it put together an ad talking about current day politics. Now, they're very misinformed, right? But it was powerful. They're very excitable, very passionate, dripping with emotion, and it was being shown to an audience of, you know, hundreds, and then they were screaming and jumping up and down, and I'm sitting there thinking, everything that's just been said is so out of context. So, again, they wanted that message, very emotional. So, um, it just depends, right? So, like that. There are also stages in advertising, right? When you, when you think of commercial advertising, they put together a campaign. And so they know that they're going to roll things out in certain orders. So that when they develop an ad campaign, they're not thinking of one particular image they want you to walk away with. They want to create an entire narrative. They want to create a story for you. So that if you get this ad this month, the next ad the next month, the next, the next ad, it all goes through. So there is actually a cycle in ads if you watch them. Very early on in campaigns, what a candidate needs to do is introduce themselves to the voter. And so what they give you is a bio ad. They give you, who this is who I am, this is my beautiful family, this is my beautiful kids, I got a dog that I love and don't put on the roof. They give you everything like that. So you can get an image of them of this all-around wholesome person. If you watch some of the ads, particularly around here, every one of the ads will say, this is the church I go to. And very often you'll even see somebody holding a Bible because they want you to, so, because they want you to know that about them. But they don't have to say it because all of the images convey it. Then on the other side, on the flip side, they want to define their opponent before they ever get out of the box. And so, for example, you saw this with Mitt Romney all summer, that the Obama campaign was hitting Romney all summer on his ties to Bain Capital, which was his business experience, knowing full well that he had planned a general election campaign based on that very business experience. And so that negative campaigning was designed to make him never say the words Bain Capital. So he couldn't talk about his experience when he was in the Olympics, because they had already destroyed that. He couldn't talk about his experience as governor of Massachusetts, because the Tea Party had already destroyed that. And then he couldn't talk about his business experience, because the Obama campaign destroyed that. 
which meant that what was he left to talk about when he got into the general election? Not a whole lot. So there was, a once again, a strategy, not just throwing mud out and hoping it sticks. They wanted to create a narrative all summer long to achieve a goal, and it boxed him in, gives him very little to talk about. And this is why he's doing more tag ads and more jumps on Obama, because he has nothing he can say. That's a, okay, if you want it back. Good. <laughs> do you want it back? No, that's fine. Okay. We'll, we'll I'll end up <laughs> agreeing with um, Mary here on the end about how the emotions are affected. And from the communication angle, which is you know, where I'm here, why I'm here, <laughs> y'all get to do the political stuff. It's all about he said, she said. It's about who's watching that message, knowing who your audience is. Is it the educated voter that sees these ads for the majority? Well, we see them, but is that what makes them respond? Probably not. It's, okay, well, I saw this, so this must be true, so I've got to go with this, and or my family raised me this way. If my family are talking negative about this, and the ads are negative about this, then it's got to be true, because I'm hearing it from multiple sources. Please do not rely on Facebook for your <laughs> campaign advice. It's been interesting just watching what's been posted on there. Along with all of the jokes, unless, yeah, okay, unless you're on the panel, then ours are okay. But I definitely agree that emotion plays a strong role, whether it's positive or negative. If you're trying to do that uplifting message, you better be powerful with it because you're going to have to sell it. It's much easier to believe something negative than it is something positive <coughs> about someone else. And that's true in our relationships in here, one-on-one. -on -one. You've heard something bad. They've got to prove to you that they're not. So it can definitely play a powerful role if you've got that negative image set up from the beginning or as early as this summer come November. Professor Linder, do you believe negative campaign